Hello viewers, in the last lecture we studied about the general features of inflammation in which we discussed the definition of inflammation, the causes and the sequence of events in inflammatory reaction. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is a response of vascularized tissue that delivers leukocytes and molecules of host defense from circulation to the site of infection and tissue damage in order to eliminate the offending agent. So by definition it is clear that vessels play important role in inflammatory response. So acute inflammation it has three components. First is dilation of small vessels leading to increased blood flow. Second is increased vascular permeability that enables leukocytes and plasma proteins to leave the circulation and enter in the extravascular site where uh, the injurious stimuli or the microbes are there and third one is emigration of leukocytes from circulation their accumulation in the extravascular tissue and activation and their activation to in order to eliminate the offending agent so normally the leukocytes are which are circulating which are in the circulation they are not active or they are in a stable form so they need to be activated in order to eliminate the offending agent so whenever an individual encounters uh, injurious stimuli in the form of microbes so the tissue resident macrophages they try to eliminate it and they also identify the uh, various microbial products the toxins they have receptors to identify these agents so when the receptors they are engaged there is release of some cytokines some uh, messengers or chemical mediators which act on the vessels small vessels which are present in the vicinity and these mediators they bring about the changes in the vessels that are seen in acute inflammation what are these changes these are vasodilation and increased vascular permeability so let us now study about vasodilation and increased vascular permeability so the vascular response in acute inflammation is characterized by vasodilation and increased vascular permeability vasodilation occurs in a response to mediators like histamine so now normally if we look at the capillary bed the arterial end there is increased hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end whereas the uh, hydrostatic pressure at venous end is lower at arterial end it is 32 millimeter of mercury and at venous end it is 12 millimeter of mercury so the hydrostatic pressure has a tendency to move fluid and salts out of the circulation into the interstitial tissue 
colloid osmotic pressure it is opposing force so hydrostatic pressure is moving the it has tendency to move out the fluid and salts whereas colloid osmotic pressure it tends to uh, take back the fluid and salts from the interstitial space into the circulation so the mean uh, capillary pressure comes out to be 25 mm of mercury which is same as that of the colloid osmotic pressure so there is uh, in normally there is no net gain or loss of fluid from the circulation so whatever even if there is small uh, loss of fluid into the interstitial tissue it is drained by the lymphatics drained by lymphatics to the thoracic duct and then to the left subclavian uh, vein and then ultimately it comes back into the circulation so there is no net gain or loss of fluid now what happens if there is loss of fluid from the circulation into the interstitial space or we can say that there is accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space so this is called as edema accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space now uh, in what circumstances it can happen if the hydrostatic pressure is increased there is increase in hydrostatic pressure or the colloid osmotic pressure is decreased as in cases of decreased protein synthesis increased protein loss decreased protein synthesis is seen in liver diseases malnutrition and increased protein loss is seen in nephrotic syndrome other kidney diseases and increased hydrostatic pressure whenever there is venous outflow obstruction as in congestive heart failure so both these conditions will lead to in uh, outflow of fluid from circulation into the interstitial space so this type of uh, fluid accumulation or this type of edema is called as transudate now what is its characteristic it has low protein concentration few cells it has low protein concentration and it is non inflammatory it is seen in conditions where there is increased hydrostatic pressure and decrease in colloid osmotic pressure now another type of edema is exudate this is seen in inflammation now what happens uh, for the formation of exudate there has to be increased uh, uh, increase in the vascular permeability increase in the vascular permeability so that the fluid the plasma proteins and the leukocytes they leak out from the circulation to the interstitial space so the exudate has a high protein content it has leukocytes and it may have few rbcs so it is seen in inflammatory conditions now what happens due to vasodilation and increased vascular permeability so due to increase vascular permeability there is leakage of fluid leukocytes and plasma proteins so there is a sluggishness of blood flow due to leakage of fluid there is sluggishness the rbcs there is stasis the rbcs they accumulate and this leads to congestion at that site so what happens the leukocytes they uh come towards the endothelial cells and the endothelial cells they are also activated by uh, mediators uh, mediators which are released from the site of injury or the site of necrosis so uh, these uh, leukocytes or neutrophils they come in contact with the endothelial cells which are expressing adhesion molecules so this leads to their transmigration through the endothelium into the interstitial space or the extravascular space towards the site of uh, uh, this infection or tissue damage so next we study the various mechanism by which there is uh, increase in the permeability of vessels so the mechanism of increased vascular permeability are first is endothelial cell contraction this occurs 
in response to histamine bradykinin leukotrienes and other chemical mediators this is a this occurs rapidly and it is a short lived response second is endothelial injury endothelial injury so what happens due to endothelial cell contraction there is increase in the interendothelial spaces now second is endothelial injury endothelial injury can occur due to direct injury stimuli like physical trauma burns and also during inflammation endothelial injury can occur because of the leukocytes when the neutrophils they adhere to the endothelial cells they can damage the endothelial cells and this can lead to endothelial cell injury and increase in the uh, permeability of the vessels now in inflammation we have seen the role of blood vessels now what is the role of lymphatics lymphatics and lymph nodes so we have seen that lymphatics drain the edema fluid in case of inflammation the edema fluid is the exudate so the lymphatics they are draining the exudate and exudate comprises the leukocytes and in case of infections some microbes also so the lymphatics in response to inflammation they proliferate there is increase in the lymphatic flow and they are uh they they can get exposed to microbes also so they can get secondarily involved so this can lead to lymphangitis lymphangitis and these lymphatics then drain to the lymph nodes which become uh inflamed so this this is called as reactive lymphadenitis there is follicular hyperplasia in the lymph nodes so this was the about the uh, acute inflammation the uh, vascular response in acute inflammation next we will study about the cellular response the leukocyte migration to the site of uh, inflammation various steps we will discuss now Uh, in the intervening lecture i will discuss uh, the differences there are various differences basically i have broadly discussed the differences between exudate and transudate so we will point wise discuss the differences between exudate and transudate before the cellular events so i hope you like the lecture thanks for watching